Welcome back. It seems that Trelane has recreated a German town in the uh, latter part of World War I as part of his fixation on war. And it seems that Spock is detecting some weird energy readings from uh, this shop, so we should probably check those out. Charming place. Less technology, more humanity. I like it. Somewhere in the middle of this European charm is Trelane and the missing ships. Let's find him. Yes, let's not lose sight of what's going on, but I do also understand McCoy's point of view that this is a lot nicer than um, the place we were in last time, at least visually. Looks like a ordinary shop. Nothing obviously of great power in here. Let's take a look around. A wooden floor. Confections, a package of meat in a white wrapper, and a cash register are on this counter. Bottles and cans line the back wall as well as flowers in a vase. Pans, dishes, and lamps line this wall. Pans, dishes, Pans, dish, metal buckets in a rough pile on the floor. A small stepladder to help the shopkeeper reach the upper shelves. Not for sale, then I get. Not for sale, then I guess. This shop is not experiencing a shortage of shoes. Oh, so this isn't King's Quest V then? Do they only have one pair of shoes? Sacks of flour and household cleaning implements line this wall. A rather badly painted seascape. Okay. No great, work of, great works of art here, I guess. The shopkeeper has a barber's license. That seemed random. Pans, dishes, and lamps line this wall. Yes, yes, yes. Sacks of flour and household cleaning implements line this wall. Sacks of flour... A broom, good for sweeping things. That is usually what you use brooms for, yes. Unless you're a witch. A tattered rope sits here. An empty kettle rests upon the stove. Can I make some tea? Jars of fruit are preserved in this translucent container. A barrel of pickles. A barrel of apples. Do we have to put a worm in the apples? To trick somebody to think that they are contaminated? Wrong game. This clock looks expensive. If you say so. Looks like an ordinary clock to me. This clock looks like it is broken. You wonder who would want a broken clock. Somebody who doesn't want to know what time it is, of course. A sturdy wooden table. James Kirk, wondering when Trelane will make his grand entrance. Yeah, no sign of him so far. Mr. Spock continues to ponder the illogic of the situation. Dr. McCoy is glad that he is not a doctor in the hospitals of this time period. What you should be glad of is that you're not a patient in the hospitals of that time period. Lieutenant Commander Ellis wonders where his ship is. Here we are in the early 20th century, living in history. It's a shame that this is only a cheap sham by Trelane. I could get to like this place. True. If this were a real early 20th century German town, it would be quite... Nice. Other than the war, of course. Captain, these items are not typical of what would be available in a German shop in the 20th century. I would theorize that Trelane has set this up for a reason. Could he be testing us? I've read many reports of superior intelligences testing human beings. Trelane does not qualify as superior intelligence, Mr. Ellis. He's not testing us. He's playing with us. And I'm rather tired of his games. Yeah, we were being tested in the last mission, but uh, 
I don't think Trelane was behind that. It doesn't seem to be his MO. And I don't think that's what's happening here either. I doubt this is related to the Belkosi situation at all, in fact. I guess we're getting shore leave a little early. Sort of. Yeah, this, I wouldn't really count this as shore leave. This looks safe. I don't think anyone is going to die here. Do you agree, Captain? One never knows, Mr. Ellis. Don't push your luck, Mr. Ellis. I don't know. Foot and mouth disease can strike anyone, anywhere, and it can be fatal. <laughs> okay. One never knows, Mr. Ellis. Yes, sir. Jim? You get no response. Um, we still have to look for this um, power reading. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. So not the floor then. There's nothing unusual about the shoes. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. This object is composed of metal and wood. There is nothing unusual about it. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. Not the broom then. No witches then, I guess. A common stove, although perhaps a bit antiquated for the period. There are no unusual readings from it, Captain. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. The power contained within one of the clocks is off the scale, Captain. It matches with the sensor readings I took of Trelane's triplane on the Enterprise. Theories, Mr. Spock. Captain, the last time we encountered Trelane, he used various items, in particular, a machine hidden behind a mirror as a source for his power. This clock is another one of Trelane's power objects. And if we could find and destroy enough of Trelane's power, the village of Gothos would come apart and we might find out what happened to the Enterprise. Mr. Spock, continue scanning for power sources. All right, looks like we need that clock. How about the other clock? Captain, I am unable to filter out the power readings that I am getting from the clock. I cannot effectively scan the surrounding objects. Apples, Captain. I detect nothing unusual about them. I guess it's just the clock. Pickles, Captain. I detect nothing unusual about them. Can we scan those with the medical tricorder? The tricorder says they're delicious, Jim. Does the tricorder know that? <laughs> the tricorder says there's nothing wrong with these pickles, Jim. If I was pregnant, I might even want one. Huh? A joke that great grandmother McCoy told me once. It must have been funny once, I guess. I thought it was funny. I guess uh, McCoy does not otherwise like pickles. Neither do I, actually. Can we get an apple? You aren't thinking of trying to keep the doctor away, are you, Jim? <laughs> of course. I always hated pickles. Fine, then we won't get any. So we don't need him for anything else. Please don't take that clock. My boss would be so upset if something would happen to it. We do need the clock. It's like some bizarre game. Perhaps Trelane is putting us through mazes, watching our moves, and laughing at us. We can't give Trelane any excuses, any reason to think we've cheated. We'll find the money to buy this clock and stick it down his throat if we get the chance. Guess we have to do this fairly. We don't have any money. Let's talk to this uh, boy who works here. Hi, can I help you? What do you want for that broom? Looks like we can buy various objects here. I see you're selling food packages. Is that a coil of rope over on the wall? What do you want for those shoes? 
That really is a beautiful clock. Can you tell me how to make money around here? What do you want for that broom? Well, we don't have any money, but... Um, I guess it doesn't hurt to ask how much things are, so we know how much money we need. That old thing. I can give it to you now. You can pay me later. I'm sure my boss, Mr. Uland, won't mind. Um, well, that's very generous of him, I guess. Hi, can I help you? I see you're selling food packages. You look hungry. Sure, have it. Pay me later. Okay. This guy is not very uh, good at business, is he? What kind of food is this, anyway? This meat looks like ground beef. You are not certain you like the smell. Okay, I probably won't try to eat it, but, um... Wait, wasn't the food in... Trelane's Recreation tasteless anyway? Or am I confusing that with something else? Hi, can I help you? Is that a coil of rope over on the wall? Can you give us more stuff for free? That rope? No one ever buys rope. Go ahead and take it. I guess so. Hi, can I help you? What do you want for those shoes? I don't think we really need shoes, but at this point, if he's giving the whole store away, might as well try. I'm sorry, but those shoes have already been paid for. Oh, I guess we can't get those. Hi, can I help you? What do you want for those shoes? That really is a beautiful clock. How about the clock? Something tells me he's not just gonna give us that. It sure is. I can let you have it. Pay me later. Or maybe not. Mr. Uland wouldn't like me to give away something that expensive on a promise. I have a feeling Mr. Ulan doesn't like you giving away any of this stuff. Hi, can I help you? What do you want for those shoes? That really is a beautiful... Can you tell me how to make money around here? That would be a useful thing to know if we want to get that clock. Sure, have some money. Oh, I don't have any. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. It sure is a mystery. Alright, um, can't get the clock yet. But at least we're not leaving empty-handed. I think the shop might go out of business soon, honestly. No, it looks like the old man has moved on. Let's check out the tavern. No, it looks like the building has stopped smoking. I still think we can't go back in it, though. It is unsafe to return there. Nope. We can go to the tavern, however. You know the Baron's orders are that you are to be served in the armory. You are not to enter this establishment. Everyone knows, Fraulein, that the Baron's orders were never meant to be taken seriously. Even by him. Looks like trouble. Excuse me, but if the lady wants you out, then you should get out. Would you like to step outside? Hello, soldier. Wouldn't you look good with beer on your face? Excuse me, but if the lady wants you out, then you should get out. I won't have trouble in my place. Get out. I will be bringing beer to the armory later tonight anyway. I don't know who you are, but we had better not meet again. Nice guy. Very. A wooden floor. Yep, everything's made of wood here. A large wooden table. This seems pointless. No general description for the room here. This photograph of an ugly human female is labeled Trelane's mother. Hmm. <laughs> I guess, uh... He does not like his parents for reprimanding him at the end of, uh, The Squire of Gothos. This photograph of an ugly human male is labeled Trelane's father. All right, we get it. A severed animal head. The inscription reads, African musk ox, caught by the noble Baron Trelane von Gothos, April 13th, 1913, while on safari in darkest Africa. African musk ox? Darkest Africa? Miss Nomer's doctor, this head is not a true representative of any African species of cattle. Okay. A large and rather ugly painting of a townscape. Why are all the paintings here ugly? A chandelier. 
That it is. Some horseshoes here. Horseshoes. These Prussian cavalry sabers are really imitations. Too bad. Would be nice to have some weapons to replace our uh, uh, phasers, which, after all, are unusable. A large wooden table. Kegs of beer. They are marked for delivery to the armory. Okay. Guess we can't drink them, though. Even though they're dripping. A collection of steins. This door leads to a back room. James T. Kirk eyes the situation with great determination. Dr. Leonard McCoy likes this charming little place. I bet he does. Mr. Spock is interested in the unusual aspects of this situation. Lieutenant Commander Ellis looks uncomfortable. A patron of this establishment. A patron of this establishment. He's trying to look at his beer, but I guess I can't. A patron of this establishment. Gretel Gernsbeck, the hostess of this establishment. The bar. This is where the drinks are ordered. A beer mug. A beer mug. Are they, like, sharing a mug over here? What's going on? Or he's just sneaking a uh, sip every now and then. Yeah, that's looks what it looks like. That's funny. An imitation of a German tavern complete with badly drawn stereotypes. Trelane is nothing if unoriginal. Sometimes these planets aren't all bad, Jim. Only when they're fake, apparently. I recommend finding out as much as we can about Trelane. He's an immature maniac with immense powers. Now, what else do we need to know about him, Spock? Knowledge of his current activities would be an asset, Doctor. With an egotist like Trelane, I doubt we'll have to do too much investigating. He'll let us know what he's planning. Foreknowledge, Doctor, is preferable to surprise. I agree with Spock here. Anything we can learn would be helpful in defeating him. You know, if there wasn't someone here trying to kill us, a man could have a good shore leave in a place like this. I guess you could. Well, Miss Gernsbeck, you seem to run a very efficient place. Thank you, Colonel. Unfortunately, the war does not lend itself to efficiency. What do you wish to talk about? Why are you calling me a Colonel? That is a good question. I guess uh, the same reason that the old man does. They seem to think I'm some kind of Air Force pilot. I know who you are. Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Kirk, leader of the famed United States Enterprise Squadron that has shot down so many of our pilots, along with Major Spock and Captain Leo McCoy. Captain McCoy? Leo? Yeah. Excuse me, Gretel, could you answer a question or two for me? I will try, Colonel. What's going on with the war? Let's interrogate her. It has not been going well of late. So we are told that Kaiser Wilhelm will never surrender. I doubt the war will last more than two months. What is the date? You have been held prisoner for a long time. It is October 16th, 1918. I don't remember exactly when the First World War ended. <laughs> But they should be pretty close, yeah. I'm glad it's coming to an end. I've lost so many friends. I've never felt so alone. You said that the war led to a lack of efficiency. What are you talking about? The soldiers are little more than animals. They do as they please because a band protects them. I must deliver kegs of beer for them every night. It keeps them from having to leave the armory. I'm glad it's coming to an end. I've lost so many friends. I've never felt so alone. What do you know about Trelane? I know the band despises you and has vowed to kill you if you should ever meet again. Take my advice. Flee Gothos and never return. And how does one flee Gothos? I do not know. Else I would have left long ago. The village of Gothos seems to ensnare anyone who comes here. You see, I really work for the French government. I'm a spy. 
Uh, yeah, just tell random people that. I guess she thinks that we work for the United States Army, so... I'm glad it's coming to an end. I've lost so many friends. I've never felt so alone. Spy? I have been here for two years. The Western Front is very close, and I send information to France. Good. I'm glad it's coming to an end. I've lost so many friends. I've never felt so alone. Why do these soldiers bother you? The soldiers are little more than animals. They do as they please because a band protects them. I must deliver cakes of beer for them every night. It keeps them from having to leave the armory. Yes, we get it. You deliver beer. I'm glad it's coming to an end. Can you give me some money? Uh, I Alone, doubt that. Fraulein, can you give me some money? I have no money. I would ask some of the people in the village for work if you wish to earn a little money. I'm glad it's coming to an end. Alone, Fraulein? Perhaps someday, when you have defeated your enemy and this war is finally over, you would come and visit me. I would enjoy spending better times with you. Perhaps, Fraulein. It's kind of interesting where these people are coming from. I don't think Trelane recreated any people last time we saw him. There's also these two gentlemen we can talk to. Rudolf Uhland, owner of the shop outside. What seems to be the problem? What do you think about the war, Harold? And we can um, interrogate them as well. Herr Schiller would have us believe that Germany is doomed. But I have more faith in our great soldiers than that. Victory shall be ours. Herr Kirk, what is it this time? What can you tell me about Trelane? The perfect chairman. If anyone can turn this war around, it's him. You're such a sycophant, Rudolf. Herr Kirk, what is it this time? You wouldn't happen to know where a man can get money in Gothos. If a man has no money, he's not a man. Penniless rabble, why worry about them? Herr Kirk, what is it this time? That's a very nice clock in your shop. If you wish to purchase the clock, all you have to do is pay for it. It's a simple enough arrangement. Fair enough, I guess. I saw how you handled that foolish brute outside. Quite impressive. I am Schiller, superintendent of the local schools. How may I help you? What do you think of the war? Horrible business. When it started, I thought it would be good for Germany. But it soon became a mess. I hope it will be over soon. If we can settle this thing without harsh negotiations, we can get back to being a civilized nation once again. Yeah, Germany is not going to be out of trouble for quite a while, I'm afraid. Herr Kirk, though my position as school superintendent keeps me busy, I'm always glad to help you. What can you tell me about Trelane? A flamboyant man, and the greatest pilot in Germany. If only his soldiers weren't such rabble. Herr Kirk, though my position as school super... Where can I go to earn some money? One might find a little money doing odd jobs around the village. I guess so. Herr Kirk, though my position... What's special about the school? Well, Captain Hauptmann is addressing our class, trying to make the children into proper Germans. And we have a brand new chalkboard. Okay, that's good to know, I guess. Herr Kirk, though my... Thank you, Herr Schiller. I don't think I require your generosity, but the offer is appreciated. Any time, Colonel. Hmm. I thought I had more beer than this. <laughs> it's because he's stealing from you. Herr Kirk, what is it this time? I'm just saying hello, Herr Oland. I suppose I should be courteous, Herr Kirk, but there's little profit to be made in having good manners. Um, can we scan anything in here? The tricorder indicates that these are ordinary beer kegs. I don't think there's any power objects in here, because Spock did not point out anything. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. The tricorder detects no unusual properties. Except for its unusual ugliness, Spock. My father painted that! It's a very nice painting. Come to think about it, it's very, um, interesting. <laughs> okay. Don't insult uh, the host, please. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. A 
a replicated animal head. It is not an authentic species. Nothing unusual about these signs. An ordinary chandelier, or Trelane's facsimile of one. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. I think you can scan the beer with the medical tricorder. My medical tricorder identifies the substance contained in the keg to be a fermented cereal produced by a malting process. In other words, beer. How come Spock gets to ramble on forever with his explanations without interruptions and I don't? Good question. Not the epitome of perfect human health. Not the epitome of perfect human health. How about her? Human being in good physical condition. Nothing too uh, interesting. I think you get some funny messages if you try to take stuff around here. You don't want to give the Fraulein the wrong impression about us, do you, Jim? We're supposed to be Air Force pilots, not pickpockets. I am puzzled, Captain. The portraits have neither practical purpose nor aesthetic value, and yet you wish to take them. I am puzzled. Now why would you want an ugly thing like that, Jim? Another trophy for your collection, Captain. It is unlikely that a severed animal head will help us against Trelane. They appear to be bolted to the wall. I'm afraid they were never meant for actual use, Colonel. So nothing more than decorations. Too bad. The chandelier is tightly fastened to the ceiling. I thought Starfleet officers weren't supposed to be superstitious, Captain. Colonel, those are for the armory. Please do not take them. I don't need those brutes storming my establishment to demand their beer. Fair enough. You don't want to give the Fraulein the wrong impression about us, do you, Jim? We're supposed to be Air Force pilots, not pickpockets. All right, all right, all right. I'll move on. Let's see what's in the back room. If I didn't know your good luck was only temporary, I'd be quite annoyed. Mr. Fullhouse is complaining. If his hands were any more indecent, he would be arrested. With the Baron's soldiers, he might be arrested even if his hands were decent. I can't complete a straight to save my life. Or your fortune. Looks like they're playing poker. That would be an interesting way to make some money. Although we need money first to join, I guess. A wooden floor. This seems pointless. Cups, dishes, and other supplies are stored on these shelves. Looking through a ragged knot hole, it is obvious that this cupboard is empty. This barrel is full of beer. Well, we are still in the tavern, so that makes sense. These crates contain potatoes. Cups, dishes, and other supplies are stored on these shelves. A wood-burning stove which heats this cellar on cold October nights. Oh, we're in the cellar. That's not obvious at all. There is a date circled on this calendar. October 16, 1918. This landscape does not look like the work of a professional. Apparently all the paintings Trelane made are ugly for some reason. I don't know why. A poker table. One of the pleasures of life in the village of Gothos. A German card shark. A German card shark. A German card shark. Okay, same message for all three. James T. Kirk. He prefers poker to chess. Dr. McCoy wishes he had a better poker face. Mr. Spock. He prefers chess to poker. Even though Kirk was the one playing chess in the first episode, which is kind of weird. Lieutenant Commander Ellis. He prefers athletics to parlor games. Okay, well, that's just completely irrelevant. Poker, hmm. I think Kirk is thinking what I'm thinking. I've been known to play a mean hand of poker on occasion. I imagine you do too, Kirk, except people seem to keep calling your bluff. 
Can you just shut up? Poker. How unusual to find this activity in Germany during this period. Fascinating. Fascinating? Just because your ears grow when you bluff? That would make poker very difficult. I guess Pinocchio doesn't play poker. Ah, poker. I remember this time in medical school where I got into this game. Doctor, I see no relevance of your story to this situation. Spock, did anyone ever tell you that you can be damn rude? Yes, he, that was quite rude. Welcome. I am Kurt Nielsen, owner of the Gossels Brewery. If you care to join, feel free, if you can pay the stake. Uh, we can't, unless we can, like, wager a communicator or something. Hello. I am Richard Sondergaard. I published a local newspaper. It's nice to see someone as famous as you, Lieutenant Colonel. Doesn't it worry you, Herr Sundergaard, that you know an enemy ace is standing next to you? The Baron has given orders for everyone in Gothos to treat you well, Herr Kirk. A fellow pilot honoring fellow pilots, I suppose. Although I would not trust the military to follow those orders to the letter. Okay, that explains why nobody is trying to uh, kill us, despite us ostensibly being the enemy. I'm Van Gillard, the shoemaker. If you are not prepared to play, please leave us. Excuse our friend. He doesn't like to perform in front of an audience. Welcome, friends. Can I help you? What can you tell me about the war? And we can interrogate him. My son is in the army. I fear for him constantly. I've tried to convince the commander at the armory to authorize his transfer. I would do nearly anything for that transfer. Hmm. Interesting. We might have to remember that. Welcome, friends. Can I help you? What can you tell me about the war? What can you tell me about Trelane? I hear Kirk, you know the Baron quite well, do you not? I doubt I could tell you anything you do not know. Welcome, friends. Can I help you? What can you tell me? What can you t Can you help me get into this poker game? I would lend you a stake to enter this game, but it appears that I will have to win a few hands to give you that money. I guess he is down on his luck. Welcome, friends. Can I help you? What can, what can you can you help? What can you tell me about the war? My son is in the army. That seems to be all. I don't think the others have anything else to say. Gentlemen, I'm busy. If you are not prepared to play, please don't bother me. I guess not. Anything to scan here? The tricorder detects nothing unusual. The tricorder did. I don't think so. A wood burning stove. This appears to be several decades old and is chiefly composed of cast iron. The barrel contains beer. The tricorder detects. Alright, nothing of real interest here, I guess. So let's leave. And we'll see what else we can find in this village in the next video.